The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Wednesday morning, 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. And we got markets in positive territory. S&P's up about 13 points. That's almost half a percent, trading at 28.71. The Dow up 104 points right now, 23,865. NASDAQ up 51 points at 89.75. You see the chart of the S&P up there? Quite a little drop off in the final, was it hour of trading yesterday? From a high of about 28.90, we finished the day at about 28.55. You actually dipped to a low overnight of about 28.45. You then proceed to see the S&Ps trade about 40 points from 28.45 to 28.85. And since about the last two hours, you've seen that market drop off. These are 30-minute bars we're looking at trading from 28.85 down right now 15 points from that price level at 28.80. 70. Start things off, we'll jump over to the charts. And we'll start it off the NASDAQ 100. There's the drop off yesterday afternoon from above 9,000. You trade down to, and what are we looking at? 15 minute bars? Yes, 15 minute bars. So basically, by, by, by about 3.30, you were down at a low of 88.86 by 3.45. Right now, you've got that market trading at 89.71, almost made it back up to 9,020. We made it to 9,008 at about 6 a.m. S&Ps we covered. The highs yesterday were about 28.90. We were up there within about five S&P points, 28.85. Dow 30, quite the sell-off yesterday as well. We go from above 24,000. We trade down end of the day to about 23,728. Market dips to a low of 23,644, currently trading 23,872. Crude oil market, $23.30. Quite the little drop off we just had, folks, in the last hour and a half. 7 a.m. Eastern time, you're trading at 25.50. Fast forward to 8.30 and you're trading $2.25 lower. Remarkable run, volatility continuing. We made it all the way up to $26 yesterday, right on the dot, Tuesday night, 7.30 p.m., 26.009. We're currently trading almost $3 below that level with crude and we get EIA inventories two hours from right now, 10.30, we get the numbers on that. Tom and I will be on the air live for those numbers. Gold contract 1703 right now, and you got the euro US dollar trading at 10807. In terms of what else we have happening in the market, it is earnings season. GM out with their numbers, eking out 294 million profit in the first quarter despite the pandemic crippling production and sales. GM had about 32 billion in available cash entering April, including 16 billion from its revolving credit facilities. So that number, $294 million profit on an adjusted basis basis gm its pre-tax profit for the first quarter was 1.3 billion down 45 percent from a year ago gm reported a net profit of 2.2 billion in the first quarter of 2019 its adjusted pre-tax earnings were 2.3 billion a year ago jumping over to gm it's been a tough deal to be a car company right check out that drop from 24 even in the last few days putting some context in this from 35 to 14, we're gonna to open today at 2250. GM trading a bit higher on that news. We got Disney numbers after the bell last night. Disney missing on the earnings, beating on the revenue. There's your volatility number on Disney. We were trading, closing out the date about 101. You spiked to 97.52. Their numbers technically coming in at 60 cents. They were looking for anywhere between about 83 to 86 cents. They had about $18 billion in revenue. Since this morning though, 7 a.m., we've traded from 99.21. We're up $2 from that price level plus at 101.37. For Disney, getting into what they had to say, 60 cents, as I mentioned, revenue just above 18 billion at 18.01. 
Wall Street had been looking for 89. I heard 86 on the Thinkorswim platform. It says expected 83. So somewhere in the 80s, the market was looking for and revenue of 17.8. So they beat by 201 million. Uh, however, it's difficult to compare reported earnings to analyst estimates for the obvious reasons of what's going on in the country right now. Uh, Disney suspending its dividend payout for the first half of the fiscal year. You should really have no problem with that, folks. If uh, Disney's almost going to be a a growth company on the media side, right? And they're a parks company on obviously the park side. Um, but you can't have a problem with a company wanting to make sure they have the cash to survive this tough year or two, especially in the spot Disney is in right now. Total operating income 2.2, excuse me, 2.42 billion in the quarter, down from 3.82. I mean, you know, think about it. they had 18 billion dollars in revenue. Operating income was 2.42 billion in the quarter. Now they had a, probably a decent January and February, maybe. Um, in that quarter and i wonder how this second quarter is going to shape out not to mention the next year in its entirety uh on the company's analyst call let's say new produce uh procedures disney would put in place at its parks once they reopen including limiting guest capacity implementing density controls and health precautions like temperature checks and masks it'll be interesting to see you know we're in florida we're in tampa we're in st petersburg you have disney of course in orlando you have Bush Gardens, which I'm a member uh, right here in Tampa as well. And it's tough to imagine the time when you feel super comfortable there, even if there's 25% capacity, they're huge parks. That's a lot of people. Um, typically, he said the park has 80,000 visitors per day for Shanghai Disney. They're talking about Shanghai Disney here. Um, but the government has mandated they operate 30% capacity, 24,000 visitors. Uh, the park would initially open operating well below the capacity and ramp up to reach the 30% cap over several weeks. They have furloughed 100,000 employees. So Disney, uh, a bunch of stories out there. But yeah, um, you know, Disney Plus now has 54.5 million subscribers, but Disney's other major businesses, theme parks, film production, media networks, you're talking ESPN, you're talking Hulu, uh, not to mention producing these movies and then getting them out into movie theaters. I believe it was last year, they had 10 movies that all grossed a billion dollars in their own, on their own, at movie theaters, 10 of them. And you could just see that being zero from here on out through the rest of the year. Very possible worldwide that they can put up, that they can not put up any numbers even close to that. Um, the goal for Disney is clear to have investors value Disney closer to Netflix. That's what's going to be interesting here is, and you know, when they start ramping things up, what are you going to look at? And Netflix is very comparable when you're talking about a streaming company that's now approaching 60 million subscribers. I believe Netflix just had a great quarter, adding something like 15 million people to bring their total to 180 something, 186 maybe for their subscriber total. And you got Disney at 60, and Disney just started streaming in the last was it six months maybe. Um, Disney has a trailing 12-month P/E ratio of about 20, a healthy multiple for legacy media companies. It compares very favorable with you know Viacom but Netflix's price to earnings right now 85 so it makes sense folks you know Disney a lot more entrenched in just uh, having parks you know um, Disney World Disneyland Disney Shanghai let alone the the business plan of relying on profits from movie theaters but all that's about to change it'll be interesting to see how these two companies begin to uh, merge because as disney catches up to that number what's going to be the difference by a netflix with 180 million subscribers by a disney with subscribers and uh you get the reliability in the future of that disney revenue stay tuned folks we'll be right back if you're in the cd market and looking for a secure investment the tiger first mugs program may work for you the security for these first mortgages are building lots in the tax opportunity zone in st petersburg florida the Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. The market's pulling back a bit right now. S&P is positive by just seven points, trading at 2865. You look at where we were just at 630 this morning. We were up there 20 points higher in their S&Ps. Things accelerating a little bit to the negative. NASDAQ 100 up 34 points right now. The Dow up just 62. Jumping back to some of the stocks with earnings this morning. CVS out with their numbers, jumping from 6121 to a high of almost 65. Right now trading at 63. 63 actually conference call starting at 8 a.m and jumping back to the cvs numbers a dollar 91 a share the estimate was a dollar 63 revenue was above estimates as well the company kept its prior 2020 earnings per share guidance in place Although it said it would withhold more detailed guidance due to uncertainty, and CVS benefited from consumer stockpiling of medications amid the virus outbreak. Uh, yeah, there we go. I wanted the number. 9% increase in same-store sales during the first quarter, expanding drive through testing locations and plans to have nearly 1,000 across the country by the end of May. So CVS shares trading up on that news, 9%. Pretty staggering, even in light of people stocking up. Uh, at, a com at a place like CVS. Other companies out there with action so far today, Shopify out with their numbers, 19 cents a share for the latest quarter. That's what the market was looking for. Uh, no, excuse me, they earned 19 cents. The market was looking for a 19 cents loss. Uh, revenue also topping expectation. expectations. Shopify, you trade higher, but what's going on here? So there's the spike to 718. You accelerate down to a low here of 656. Conference call began 14 minutes ago when we got on the air. How about that? 666. Not sure the market's liking that news. Uh, nonetheless, Shopify, pretty remarkable. They turn a profit. Um, they come in with a revenue beat as well. 
However, the company said it expected ad rev. Oh no, excuse me. Yeah, revenue also topped ex expectations. Yeah, so they're saying something on there. Nonetheless, Shopify trading a bit lower. That's a stock with some volatility recently. Papa John's, 15 cents a share in the most recent quarter, below the estimate of 39. Revenue also missed. The company said the pandemic first began to impact sales in late January, when stores in China and South Korea were closed, and they withdrew their guidance for 2020. P Z Z A. From 77.80 down to about 74 right now on Papa John's. Wendy's reported earnings of nine cents a share, a penny a share below estimates. Revenue fell short of forecast as well. Same store sales were down 0.2 percent. Not bad. I mean, these, you know, um, fast food companies able to actually keep going, but the market looking for a two percent increase there. Wendy's cut its quarterly dividend. There's some stories recently in the news about Wendy's having beef shortages. Look at that action, though. Up to 2025, conference call just beginning when we came on the air at 2003. I'm going to jump over to a little bit of COVID action just because everywhere is opening up. And um, this affects the markets, folks, as we see kind of what happens. You know, there's some interesting facts out there that I want to make sure everybody is aware of. One thing I found most interesting, maybe you've seen it around the web, um, numbers in terms of new cases somehow plateauing. About 25,000 cases are being identified daily. Now, that number plateauing, no longer accelerating. But what you should be aware of here, folks, is the New York metro area was hit so hard. You, those cases, thankfully, declining rapidly. If you pull them just out of even the rest of the United States, the number's actually climbing. And you really want to be careful. So, you know, I hope everything opens up uh, back up well. But the numbers are pretty staggering. And even jumping around to a few different articles, um, what I didn't realize myself, everyone heard the numbers, right, especially in the beginning. Um, if you compare it to the flu, if you compare it to how many in the flu, well, the numbers we're dealing with for deaths, which is, shame on me for not knowing the exact, but above 60,000 people have died, probably approaching 70,000 people. And that's confirmed deaths in the U.S. And the way the flu is actually counted is that they don't count the actual number of deaths. For instance, um, 2018 to 2019, for instance, only 7,172 confirmed flu deaths were accounted for during that year in terms of being tested for it. The final estimate that everyone touts at the CDC, between 26,000 and 52 deaths. So you have the confirmed ones that are actually for sure confirmed, tested positive for the flu, and then unfortunately passed away versus the total number that you're going to account for that assigns to that season of loss. Now you compare that to, of course, the number of confirmed COVID deaths. We know we're missing some numbers. Just be aware of these numbers, folks. You know, we got a lot of people listening. Um, what is the real coronavirus toll in each state? So this is a, a Times piece, I believe, from yesterday. Yeah, all these super, super, super recent news. Um, and this talks about excess deaths versus normally, okay? And then you get down in here further and you compare it to actually excess deaths versus what's being reported. New York, they have 23,000 excess deaths, even contributing 18,000. They're still 4,300 short of probably the number of people who have passed away. Um, Florida itself, 80. Florida, of course. Um, and then you factor in the news yesterday. That's why just, just be vigilant yourself. You know, you can be out and about, respect people, maybe with uh, wearing a mask when appropriate. Maybe if you want to wear gloves, right, wash your hands, do all of this stuff. Be very aware to social distance when possible because you have an internal Trump administration report that expects about. And I had to go over this left and right because I was like, wait a second, is this 200,000 um, cases? What are we hitting now? We're getting about 25,000 to 30,000 cases a day right now. And the Trump administration expects 200,000 daily cases by June. That's almost eight times. That's like seven to eight times the amount of daily cases that we're getting right now. And I like had to go over it. And that's when I started researching more articles, just so you understand where and that's when I said, you know, I should spend just a few minutes because I don't know if everyone's seen all this. I am consumed by news by being in the market. And I find it so extremely difficult to keep up with what's going on because of the amount of information that are, that are that is just information overload. Um, so this is a projection that is being put out there and the death toll will obviously rise. You know, you have that choice to open back up there. There may be a sacrifice, um, you know, Florida's map. So here's Florida's map. I was looking at this as well. Definitely a trend declining new reported cases in Florida. Definitely. You don't like to see any type of a tick up. Very worrisome in light of things opening back up. But these are cases up here 
deaths on the bottom cases, hopefully seeing that decline. But, you know, if you just open the spigot and you have pe- people, um, you know, opening back up, it's it's a tough one there, folks, in terms of seeing how you may see a tick back up, of course. And I have to tie it in because I want to hear from Pussy. I want to hear from him information that is true. And it's a bummer. He's not going to be in front of the house. OK, and it's because of, quote unquote, haters. I want everything that that man has to say out there and you should too okay it's scary stuff so be aware of all these statistics be aware of what this graph looks like when you take out metro area when you're out there and about um and just be careful out there because these numbers these statistics um, may be vastly underrepresenting and we're all getting to the point where you may actually know somebody who is affected and hopefully survives or or um battles it and, and beats it but uh, we're, we're approaching the point that you're going to know somebody, unfortunately, that may pass away, especially those older communities. We're hearing all the nursing homes and so forth. But those numbers startled me. I wanted to take a look at them real quick because uh, you should be aware of them, too. Be safe out there. So Friday, U.S. payrolls. How about it? We're looking for above 20 million on terms of the drop. That's going to lead to an unemployment number of about 16 percent as we look for that market. Jumping back to the S&Ps, we're down about 12 points right now, trading at 28.70. NASDAQ 100 plus 48, and the Dow up about 100. Stay tuned, folks. We come back to finish up the program, see what else we have for earnings. I'll take a look at oil as well, EIA inventories at 10.30 this morning. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. S&P is positive by 13 with about 35 minutes to go until the opening bell, jumping back into some of the companies with earnings since last night. You had Mattel out with their numbers. Mattel earning negative 56 cents a share for the latest quarter. They were supposed to lose 41 percent, uh, excuse me, 41 cents. So bigger loss than the market was looking for. Revenue also below estimates and it predicted a sharp drop in current quarter sales due to the coronavirus lockdown. You see those shares trading from about $8.60 down almost a dollar on the number right now trading at 790. Pinterest out with their numbers, quarterly loss of 10 cents a share. Pinterest said ad spending has been slowing and that it expense, its expenses will continue to grow. Check out this drop on Pinterest. No bueno from $20.81 down almost $4, uh, down more than $4 to $16.70 initially, currently trading at $17.29. Activision Blizzard out with their numbers and EA, two gaming stocks. Activision, ATVI actually trading about $5 higher at 73.25. EA though, trading lower at 115.67 from 120.30. Beyond Meat, out with their numbers last night, earned three cents a share for the quarter compared to an estimate of a seven cent loss. The market was a little bit worried with restaurants shut down, but they delivered from 100, you're up about 8.7%, easy one when you're at 100, to 108.80 right now, and you spiked all the way to 112.79 actually on the number. Cheesecake Factory out with their numbers, profit of four cents a share, their stock trading basically muted so far this morning up a bit, and you had Planet Fitness, P-L-E-N-T, they missed estimates by 18 cents a share. It's interesting, all these companies hugely fundamentally affected, right? Gyms, restaurants, um, a meat production, production company. So Planet Fitness missed at estimates by 18 cents a share. I'll get it out with quarterly earnings of 16 cents a share. Revenue well below estimates. PLNT is their symbol and trading a bit lower, but up from 52.85 last night. And we'll check on the VIX as we wrap it up. 32.30 down from that high of 40.32 early Monday. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento live at nine o'clock. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom. Oil inventory at 10.30. Live programming all day at TFNN. We'll be right back.